so really, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, setting the scene now as we, oh, so sorry, before we go there, I did remember I was remiss in not mentioning the, the voting in the election. So um, uh, most of the voting happens uh, online. Uh, and, uh, but if there are any voting representatives here today from, their member, from a member organization who haven't voted yet, uh, then uh, it is possible to vote uh, via a paper ballot uh, today. So um, uh, in the back here, uh, Lisa and Emily are uh, in the back here. So if you do want to, or you'll have a question about voting or, or want to actually vote, um, then uh, go, go talk to them. Hope, hopefully most everybody has voted, but you still have a little bit uh, of time um, before, before things close. Okay, <clears throat> so now talking about this, as I mentioned, uh, you know, as we are uh, uh, turning, turning 20, we have, we, we have an opportunity. And um, uh, I wanted to just note in a couple of cases, you know, uh, over the years, Crossref has uh, stayed ahead, but tried not to be too, too far ahead of developments in the community. And as Ginny noted, as the community gets more uh, diverse, that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot harder, um, and uh, you know that that's that's something we're always uh, working towards. And I was thinking of uh, you know a couple couple of examples of this over the years, though that that um, in staying ahead of the the uh, the curve, you know, Crossref has always brought together uh, organizations with different views, and there have been very uh, robust discussions over the years about what Crossref should be doing and 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 why we're doing it. And I remember very early on one of the um, uh, the first discussions was about what metadata Crossref should collect. And the consensus we arrived at was to collect the minimal set of metadata needed for uh, linking references, for matching, matching references to do the reference linking. And that was seen as being um, uh, author, uh, first author, last name, uh, volume issue, page. And that, that's, that, was, that was about it. And then there was discussion of article titles, and there were people against actually you know, depositing article titles with Crossref, let alone any any other metadata, abstracts, references, or anything like that. And that was a really, really big issue. Whereas now, you know, the thought of, uh, you know, not providing that metadata um, uh, seems uh, seems a long, long, long time ago. A couple of years later then, uh, with Similarity Check, which the value research highlights as a really valuable service that we provide, at, at the time, again, there, was, it, there wasn't a, a clear view that that this was something Crossref should be doing, a t that type of service that we should be uh, uh, providing. Uh, but we decided to do a pilot. A group of publishers uh, got together to, to lead the way, and we uh, wound up um, uh, working with uh, Turnitin. And uh, that's uh, worked out uh, really well. And we've actually just um, updated the partnership um, and, and restructured the partnership. So I think that'll uh, be really good for the next uh, uh, take us forward the next uh, couple of years, but um, you know, by the time the pilot ended, the board was like, "Yeah, we need to do this," and and it was great because then at the time, you know, uh, some other issues started to come up around plagiarism and making it a much bigger issue, and so it was kind of like we we got in there and w w managed to uh, be a little bit ahead of the curve. And then when the service was available, there was a lot of interest in it, and, it, and it's still growing very very uh, quickly these days. Uh, another example of that was. Uh, um, you know the the um, uh, adding preprints as a content type. So we had uh, dis had a discussion over 18 months, uh, two two years, uh, really looking because of digging into the issues about duplicative content and what was happening with publishing and all of that. And then uh, there was a, a a vote. It was not a unanimous vote. <laughs> it was a majority vote on the board to add preprints as a content type because there had been a working group that included preprint publishers where we developed some policies and guidelines around how we were going to approach it. And so there was consensus. Uh, and there was still opposition at the time. But uh, we added preprints as a content type just before you know all these uh, preprint archives started uh, being launched by our members and other organizations who then became members and wanted to work with Crossref on, on, on that. So, so, you know, it's not always been easy, but I, but I think that's useful to remember as we, we, we talk about these things, you know, how, how, do, how do we keep, keep, keep that balance uh, with, um, uh, with, with going forward? Um, and we want to have a discussion with a broad and representative group, so I thought it would be good going into before tomorrow to just highlight um, 
uh, uh, the issues around our mission and the current strategic roadmap. So um, hopefully this is uh, f familiar to people. Um, uh, we've been using this for the uh, uh, last few years. And um, I think that in the value research, um, you know, this comes up that everybody was really clear about uh, easy to find site link. They were less sure about assess and, 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 what, that, and what that meant. Um, but I wanted to go back to the certificate of incorporation. And uh, this is what was actually in the filing on January 18th uh, as, as the mission of the organization. So to promote the development and cooperative use of new and innovative technologies to speed and facilitate scientific and other scholarly research. So at the time, the founders had a uh, foresight to, to define uh, uh, the, the organization's mission very broadly. On the other hand, it was called Publishers International Linking Association. So, you know, even, even at the uh, beginning, there was that idea because the reason it got going was to do reference linking. But there was a clear idea, hey, if we get all these publishers together to work and collaborate, there's more we can, there's more we can do. And uh, I think that's uh, still true today. So, uh, Again, a couple of years ago, uh, working with the board, uh, we came up with uh, this outline of our, our, our truths, which sort of goes a level below the, uh, um, the mission statement. And this is something we really, you know, we try to, we try to follow these. Uh, and um, come one, come all, uh, define publishing broadly. Uh, it's a broad church. Again, that was a decision that was made right at the start to, to, uh, to, be, to be open. And, um, uh, but I don't really think at the time anybody thought we would wind up having um, uh, 11,000 members uh, at, one, at one point. But it, one member, one vote <clears throat> is a critical uh, 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 thing, and we'll see that in action today with the, uh, with the election. Um, uh, collaboration is, is key, smart alone, brilliant, brilliant together. Uh, it's often expressed as uh, Crossref focusing on the things that can best be done or only be done uh, collectively in, in, in collaboration. Uh, uh, we're about uh, metadata and, uh, and, and technology. Um, what you see is what you get, trying to, trying to be open and, and transparent and uh, also uh, persistent, looking towards, the, looking towards the, long, the long haul. So, you know, you, you talk to different types of organizations and, you know, in some ways, 20 years can seem like a long time, but it's not at all if you talk to research institutions and, and libraries and archives and, you know, it's, it's really, Absolutely no 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 time at all. So I think it's something we still really need to be uh, to be aware of. Uh, with the strategy uh, that's available on on the um, the website as well, just to highlight the, the the key themes here. And again, we've reprinted it in the fact uh, file that uh, because then under each of these we've got a listing of the the projects we're working on grouped under these uh, grouped under these themes. And so. Um, uh, simplify and en enrich existing services, uh, and again, some of that came back very clearly in the value value research. You know, we're again trying to uh, accommodate a huge range of different uh, different organizations, um, uh, and so that's that's a really key key focus for us. Uh, adapt to expanding constituencies. We uh, have uh, now um, uh, grant identifiers. Uh, registering a grant, so uh, funders uh, are starting to uh, uh, starting to join the organization, uh, and we've expanded uh, uh, globally, across disciplines, across content types. Um, so uh, that that's been a big uh, big focus as well. Uh, improve our metadata. That's that's at the heart of everything uh, that we do, and uh, uh, collaborate and partner. So uh, a number of our uh, uh, organizations that we collaborate and work with are are represented here today. So that's. Um, uh, that's great, and we're working on initiatives, uh, you know, trying to um, uh, develop uh, organization identifiers with uh, uh, with ROAR and uh, and other other initiatives. So this is the the, the framework. Uh, but but coming out of this Live 19 meeting and the next board meeting, uh, we you know this this uh, could change. So I wanted to take a look now at some of the things from the from from the fact file and some of the things that jumped out at us. You can obviously be reviewing these and wor working on them going forward. Let's see if I can get a little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, new members joining uh, each year, and you can see uh, all the way back from uh, from from our start, and then you can see around uh, 2013 
uh, it really starts to uh, ramp up and it doesn't show any signs of uh, sort of leveling off. The, the increase is actually um, in, increasing, the rate of increase. So uh, we don't really yet have a sense of how much more this is going to grow, but um, uh, yeah, I think that's just uh, a fact of, of what's happened and it's really interesting to look at that. Um, and, I, and I think that's a big driver of some of the other things that we're looking at. And, what, and one of them is about uh, uh, perspective. What is, you know, we talked about large and small uh, organizations, but you know, what, what, what does small mean, right? And it all depends, on, uh, all depends on your perspective. And a couple of the things that struck us were, um, this is a really useful chart to look at. Um, you know, the total number of uh, content items registered, uh, and then we have the, uh, the percentage of members. So it gives us a breakdown of, you know, how many members have <laughs> 10? Uh, content items registered, you know, how many members have, uh, you know, 100,000, and you look here, and it's really, uh, the bulk is between 100 and 1,000, um, but really even, even 10, you know, 10, 10 to 100 uh, is uh, over 35 percent, and uh, 100 to 1,000 is uh, uh, just under 40, 45 percent, and then you can see the, we've got the uh, the tail going up here, a small number of organizations with a lot of, a lot of content. So again, that, that captures the picture of where, where Crossref, is, uh, Crossref is today. Uh, another thing we've been thinking about is, uh, uh, because one of the ways we um, uh, have uh, members joining is often they join by a sponsor in different countries, and that, that, that really has been really successful and helps us uh, uh, accommodate, um, accommodate this growth. But one thing we looked at in considering this is uh, purchasing power parity. And uh, we want to have a fair pricing across the board, but also want to recognize that um, uh, in certain countries, uh, $275 a year uh, is a lot of money. Uh, a dollar uh, for uh, a journal article is uh, a lot of money. So, um, it, so far, this has not been a barrier to growth, but I think it's, um, it's definitely an issue, and uh, it's definitely something we want to keep in mind um, as we as we talk about these talk about these things. Uh, and I mentioned the sponsors and uh, the sponsor uh, uh, program has really um, worked well because uh, this blue line here is the number of members joining via a sponsor, and the red line is the number of members joining uh, directly. So you can see here that, uh, and this goes to the end of 2018, and this has continued into 2019 at this trend, so that we can see that uh, uh, many more, not many more, but now we've, we've reached a point where more um, uh, members are joining via a sponsor uh, than they are joining directly. They're members, they, they sign the same membership terms. Uh, but by working with a sponsor, there's local support, there's administrative support, there's local language, uh, technical support, there's, uh, uh, we work very closely with, uh, with the sponsors to do webinars and, and, and various other things around education and best practice. So, so that's really helped uh, cope, uh, cope with that growth. But again, seem, seems like that, that, that trend is uh, continuing. Um, and the board was just discussing this. Uh, we have a membership and fees committee that regularly reviews our fees. Uh, we did a little bit of analysis, and the, the membership of the Membership and Fees Committee uh, is uh, only organizations in the top 1.1% 1. 1 of, uh, of that band that we were just showing in terms of, uh, the, number of uh, the number of DOIs, the size of the organization, uh, are represented on the Membership and Fees Committee. So the board just had a discussion about that, and we're looking at expanding the, the, um, expanding the makeup uh, and the numbers on the uh, Membership and Fees Committee, so you'll be hearing more about that. Uh, going forward. <clears throat> so with the shift in the membership, uh, the revenue, dis revenue distribution has, has changed. So looking at this chart, we've got, uh, uh, this is the top uh, fee category. Uh, this is the, uh, the lowest fee category. And we can see here that in 2011, in yellow, this is the, uh, uh, the, 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 the revenue from each of these tiers. Uh, and the blue is 2019, so you can see through the middle, it hasn't really changed much, but you can see that particularly in the $275 category, 
um, it's changed a, a, a huge amount. So we now have um, uh, uh, a higher proportion of overall revenue uh, coming from uh, the lowest uh, fee tier uh, compared to um, uh, 2011. So that, that's, that's been a really big shift, and it's, it's sort of a, a U-shape. Now, there, is, there are some issues about how we do the breaks of these different different fee categories, so, you know, obviously that's, uh, that, that's something to look at, but, um, yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is interesting to look at, but I think the corollary to this is to look at the content, right? So, again, this is the breakdown of total registered content, not revenue, but the actual content uh, <coughs> uh, by uh, membership fee tier. So, uh, I would just like to highlight that on, there is a uh, error on page 24 of the fact file, which is opposite this, this graph. And uh, it says the top three tiers uh, ha are account for 44% of the content, whereas actually it's 44% is the, the top category. So this is uh, six, six publishers actually make up that. And uh, then you add on the 12, so it's actually 56%. So over half the content is from the, the top three tiers, and the bottom three tiers are... Um, uh, 21, 21 percent. So you can see, in terms of revenue, there's been a shift, but actually, the bulk of the content is still from uh, from the largest organizations. I mean, obviously, that's there's a lot of there's a lot of back files. They've been members for a long time, uh, and uh, and that's really what drives a lot of the value of the system is having so much content avail available in it. And I think that was one of the real things that drove Crossref success, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, where there was a lot of back files, a lot of digitization going on, and and, and I think that's really helped improve the overall uh, uh, network effects of uh, what's happening within within the system. So, you know, I think it's interesting to look at both of those angles on this, right, in terms of the revenue and uh, and then the content. Um, and, and then we wanted to just try to get a sense of, uh, yeah. So, so that's where we are on uh, on that. Uh, we did a breakdown of uh, where uh, Janice's team. Um, the outreach team is, is spending its time. Uh, we wanted to try to get a sense of, um, of that. And so you can see we've broken it down across some of the key users, Meta metadata users, uh, 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 collaborators or organizations that we collaborate with, um, and, uh, and, and, and members. And then we've broken that down into the different, uh, dif different member types. And so you can see that, that of course, uh, the bulk of the time is spent, you know, it's still 20%. So we're spreading this all across uh, a lot of different uh, constituencies um, uh, is the is is the large publishers, uh, and uh, but if you look at obviously all the publishers together, that's the the bulk of the time, seventy percent, which you know makes sense uh, as being a membership organization and wanting to get that content in. But I think that's also just reflected to well, there's a lot of content, and then most content is coming from the the big publishers, so so they also need help, and it also goes back to that theme of simplifying our services. So that's something we're, we're, we're definitely looking at uh, in how to make it easier to get metadata in and do things in an automated way. Um, yeah, but we can see here that um, uh, we have a little bit of time on uh, actually dealing with the sponsors, but that has huge payoffs in, in accommodating all those uh, smaller, smaller organizations. But, um, uh, and then we also have uh, metadata users, um, which is the, smaller bit over, over here, that's, that's the smallest uh, 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 category. But that, that covers a huge range of different types of, uh, different types of organizations. Um, so a few, few other points, uh, I think Ginny touched on this, you know, uh, large publishers have pushed Crossref uh, to progress. Uh, a lot of uh, the new metadata projects, uh, license URLs, full text links, uh, for text and data mining, ORCID, you know, that, that's, that's, all, um, that's all helped. It's also been important to have s staff working on uh, groups, chairing groups, writing, writing papers. But again, we, we, we want to make sure that everybody uh, contributes and uh, participates. So looking at uh, sustainability, um, uh, Crossref has been um, uh, financially stable, uh, prudent financial management over the years means that uh, since 2002, uh, I believe we've, we've generated a surplus. And you can see, um, uh, uh, yeah, that means we have uh, persistent, uh, persistent uh, uh, revenue coming in here. And you can see the, the uh, surplus, the net income 
uh, does, does vary. And um, as we saw a lot of that membership growth and uh, some other changes happening, uh, there was a conscious decision by the board to uh, put more resources uh, into uh, uh, staff, uh, uh, in particular, uh, in, in, in addressing some of those uh, growth issues. And uh, so in, in 2017 and in 2018, the, the, the surplus has gone down. And, uh, this is the year-end forecast for, for this year, so every, everything looking very, uh, uh, very healthy, but, but again, as we said, do we have the, you know, is the balance right in terms of where the revenue is coming from? Because 88% of the revenue comes from the uh, membership fee and the content registration fee combined. The content registration fee is 60%. Uh, over 60%. So, you know, that's, that's where the revenue is coming from. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's something to, to think about and, and to, uh, to talk about if, if that's the, uh, uh, the breakdown. For instance, we do have Metadata Plus where we charge for metadata uh, services. Um, and that's about, you know, 9% of revenue, but, it, but it's growing fairly quickly. So, So, uh, look, looking to the uh, looking to the future, um, yeah, we want to we want to look at uh, uh, what what's been successful. I think Crossref's been uh, successful in uh, many many different ways, um, uh, bringing together diverse organizations uh, to reach a consensus on uh, how uh, everybody can benefit uh, benefit each other, raise all boats. And uh, one of the phrases is used, again, thinking back to the early days of Crossref, was for some of the publishers, was enli enlightened self-interest, right? You know, they realized that actually by working together, ev everybody could, could benefit. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this, so consider where we are at the moment. But also think about uh, infrastructure. Crossref is providing the scholarly infrastructure. Uh, we've been expanding the metadata. We've been expanding um, the types of uh, metadata we collect, uh, making relationships, so ORCID IDs, uh, funding information, um, data citation. Uh, that's all been things that we're working on. And so, but you can also see that there is a division that, that you see some, some organizations being, you know, um, if you look at the participation reports, for instance, you can see that some organizations are providing lots of metadata. A lot of organizations aren't providing much, very much metadata at all. And how, how do we address that? I think that's, that's the challenge. Yep, think about what can best be or only achieved uh, by, uh, by working uh, collect collectively. And I think we all just have to be prepared uh, to change, you know, and, and not be wedded to the way we're doing things. And, you know, Crossref has changed over the years and, you know, it's been fairly, fairly steady change, but I think we've, we've, we've had a number of inflection points uh, uh, throughout, uh, throughout our history. And I think, yeah, we're, we're coming up on another one. So uh, we're really looking forward to, uh, um, to having some discussions, discussions around this. And uh, just to highlight that um, uh, Crossref, at a crossroads is a, a scholarly kitchen post that uh, Amy Brand from MIT Press wrote recently, and um, you know I thought she ended well, saying the crossref of 2040 could be an even more robust, inclusive, and innovative consortium to create and, and sustain core infrastructures for sharing, preserving, and evaluating research information. So, some, something to think about, and um, uh, I think that's. Uh, as far as I'll go at this point, so um, yeah, very happy to um, to take any 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 questions or points of clarification. Mark in the back, if you want to just oh, we've got a mic here. Sorry, thanks, Joe. You can if you can just introduce yourself, even though I said your name. Um, Mark Patterson from eLife. I just wondered, uh, when you looked at the distribution of content registration over all time, have you looked at that just annually as well? And does that then fit more with the distribution of income by member class? So, no, we haven't, we haven't looked at it annually. Uh, all, all that we've done here so far is we looked, at, we looked at it total and then we looked at it for 2019. And then, so there's some data in here that shows that, that again, it's... it's it sort of evened out a little bit, but but obviously, clearly, more more revenue, content registration revenue is still coming, and content coming from the the top, the top end. But uh, but yeah, no. Look, looking back from year to year, we don't have a sense of the um, the trend line there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, great. Uh, well, I think uh, that's it for this session. So uh, we will have a break. We'll come back and hear from some, uh, some other organizations uh, before we then finish up the day with the, uh, the election. So I think we are back uh, at quarter past three. Yeah, quarter past three. Thank you very much. We'll see you in half an hour. Thank you.